An unstable neighbor would lead to a deadly altercation. Hello, true crimeers. This is the case of Jason Horsley. Viewer discretion is advised. Jason Horsley was born on June 6, 1973, and he was born and raised in Sheridan, Wyoming. He was the oldest of three boys in the family. By 1991, he had graduated from Sheridan High School, where he was also part of the National Honor Society. Jason was a very active uh, young man. He loved to go uh, rock climbing, mountain climbing. He also loved playing sports like basketball. He ran cross country. He competed in uh, state wrestling matches. As a matter of fact, he was a state champion in wrestling during his senior year in high school. He would eventually end up going to Forest Grove, Oregon, where he attended college. And while there, he really loved the outdoor scene. He loved going fishing and hiking, camping. He would snowboard all the time. And at the time this case occurred, he had been working as a contractor uh, for quite some time. At some point, he met Deborah Loisel, and the two of them hit it off very quickly, and they grew madly in love with one another, and Jason would end up proposing to her, and she said yes. They actually got engaged around 1996 or 1997 or so, but they, because at that point they were back in Sheridan, Wyoming, they didn't really feel like the, the lifestyle there in Sheridan, Wyoming wasn't really jiving with them. It wasn't really matching them. So they decided they wanted to pick up and move somewhere completely different. And that's why where they would end up choosing to move to Denver, Colorado. They would end up buying a home in the City West Park neighborhood in Denver, Colorado, and it was a former crack house. And it needed a lot of work because there was a lot of significant damage to this house. But Jason, working in construction and being a contractor, uh, this was like kind of a dream job for him. He was going to remodel his own home. They were both uh, very excited to get this house up and running, to make it look like they wanted it to look, and for this to be their potential forever home, where they were going to, you know, get married, they were going to hopefully have kids, and live a happy ever after life here. But sadly, that would not be the reality. What they did not know was that they had moved next door to a monster. The neighborhood itself was considered a, a really kind of nice neighborhood. It was relatively safe. Deborah would say that she had no issues with anyone in this neighborhood, uh, no issues at all, except for their next door neighbor. And the neighbor's name was Malika Griffin. Almost from the get go, uh, Malika had issues with Jason and Deborah. Jason and Deborah had a couple of dogs, and they were really well-behaved dogs, but dogs bark, you know, kind of the part of what being a dog is. And um, apparently I didn't like that. And she would yell at the dogs through the fence and telling them to shut up and basically creating a stressful situation. And so one day Deborah kind of confronted her like, hey, what's going on? You know, it looks like you're provoking the dogs. And Malika kind of blew up on her, started screaming at her. And Deborah's like, can we just like hit the reset button? We're going to be neighbors. We're going to be living next to each other. I want to be able to get along with you. But Malika was like, nope. And then she walked away. Then another day, uh, Malika comes out of her house, she storms out, she starts screaming at Jason because Jason is unloading his tools on the sidewalk from his truck and it's in front of his home, but she does not like that. She gets very angry that he's making a mess of the sidewalk. It was just, a, it was just she needed to be mad at something, it sounded like. Jason was not in the wrong, he was just unloading his truck and putting stuff on the ground to carry into the house but she blew up on him about this. And then another time uh, occurred where he had parked his truck outside on just the front of the house, the sidewalk, public parking. There was no assigned parking spots. Malika did not have a car. She did not drive. And she comes storming out of the house one day and she starts screaming at Jason about parking his truck um, on, the, on the sidewalk because it was partially in front of her house. But again, this was a public road. She did not have a car. No assigned parking, like I said. He was allowed to park there. There was nothing wrong with doing it. And it was the only open spot. And he was like, I, I have nowhere else to park. But she just completely flipped her shit on him. 
to Jason and Deborah, all of these arguments that Malika started, none of them made sense. It just seems so random. It really did seem like she just needed to be mad about something and she just needed to argue. She did appear to be unhinged, like she was mentally unwell. One day she flipped out on Jason because he had a ladder trying to work on the roofing around his house. And I guess the ladder was sort of touching like her side yard. And she freaked out on him saying, and told me, get that, get off that ladder, move the ladder right now. But he's like, I have to repair this roof. I need the ladder. She's like, no. Uh, and so he calls the landlord um, who op operates this, I guess these homes. And the landlord's like, yeah, no, you can put your ladder there. There's nothing wrong with it. Keep doing what you're doing. But again, Malika did not listen. And she's like, she just completely lost her shit. And then on May 19th, 1999, it all came to a violent end. Jason returned home and he and Deborah would take the dogs for a walk and they got back to the house and um, Jason told Deborah, hey, I'm gonna go unload my truck, get the tools off of there. Deborah's like, please, you know, don't, you know, she's home. She's gonna freak out on you. But he's like, I need to do it because I need my tools out. You know, I gotta, gotta work on the house. And so she goes back into the house with the dogs. She ends up going into the backyard. She starts like watering the lawn. Jason begins to unload his truck. Apparently, witnesses would say they saw or heard uh, Malika come out and start screaming at Jason about unloading his tools again. It's almost as if she was just waiting for him to do it so that she can come out and start yelling at him. There was like a brief altercation, a screaming match between the two of them. But then Malika goes back into her house. Jason continues unloading his truck. All of a sudden, Malika comes storming out of the house. She is armed with a 9mm. She walks up to Jason behind his back at close range and fires a shot through his spine. He then falls into the truck. Deborah, who's in the backyard, hears the gunshot. She rushes out. A neighbor comes rushing over, sees Jason basically hunched over in the truck, with blood all over his back. The neighbor gets into the truck, helps get Jason in the truck and rushes to the hospital. Jason is immediately put into emergency surgery, but unfortunately, several hours later, the surgeon will come out and say, we could not save him. Jason Horsley died. Malika Griffin, right after the shooting, she ran down the street. She completely took off. She would end up going to a nearby friend's house where she took the nine millimeter, pointed it at her friend and said, I'm stealing your car. Friend had no choice but to give her the keys because she had a gun trained on her. And so Malika takes the keys. She runs out to this friend's car, steals it and she takes off. The friend reports the stolen vehicle and exactly what happened. And so they put out an all points bulletin to find Malika and also this car. The car is found two days later in Iowa. Uh, the car had broke down and it could not be repaired or Malika didn't have time to repair it or, you know, she didn't, she couldn't, she couldn't have anyone see her. Then they find out that through a witness would come forward later when he, when he saw Malika's image on the news, um, he's like, holy shit, I picked her up. It was a rant, like he just, it was like a, she was hitchhiking or something. And he drove her to a bus station and she got onto a, bo a bus they confirmed on a, a bus to Chicago. But when police tried to do, you know, look and tried to find her in Chicago, they couldn't find her. What was more alarming was when they searched her home. Um, they found a lot of stuff. They found a ton of ammunition. They found more handguns. They found grenades. They found journals where she had been writing about starting a race war and murdering white people. There was a lot of horrific things and things that she was writing about how she would murder white people, be like mass murder of them. And which was kind of surprising when her friends found out, they're like, we did not know this side of her at all. Like she never spoke about it to any of us. Um, and they were just completely blown away that she was this person. Malika's mother claimed to police that Malika had called her at some point shortly after the murder and she confessed to her mom, I shot and killed a white guy and that she was on the run. But she did not say where she was. They don't know the phone she called from. It was probably a pay phone. And then she wasn't heard from again. In 2001, this case airs on Unsolved Mysteries uh, because this was a wanted person. They knew who the killer was. They just didn't know where she was. Then it airs on America's Most Wanted. And it was shortly after a re-airing of America's Most Wanted in June of 2005 when police would get tips 
on where Malika is. They found her in El Cajon, California. She had been working at a biotechnology firm under a false name. They found her and they arrested her without incident and they charged her with the murder of Jason Hortsley. They also charged her with various other crimes, including um, Grand Theft Auto because she stole her friend's car. She would end up going to trial where um, a jury would find her guilty on all charges, including first degree murder and Grand Theft Auto. And she was sentenced to life in prison without parole. And that is where Malika is to this very day, in a prison cell. It sounds like Malika just, I don't know, like, but it sounds like something mentally was obviously going on with her. Um, and it sounds like she wasn't being treated for whatever was going on with her. I don't know. And it also sounds like she was good at hiding this because her own friends didn't really know this side of Malika. They didn't know she had these violent tendencies. They didn't know she was talking about starting a, a race war and killing white people in mass. And maybe no one knew to get her help because she was so good at hiding it. But the reality is, is they didn't know her at all. And she was a monster. She just coldly walked up to Jason behind his back. She did not hesitate. And she just shot him in his back. All because what? He was doing what he was allowed to do on public property. All he was doing was unloading his tools. He's fixing this house. He's repairing this home. He needs tools to do that. You know, he parked in a public spot. Their dogs barked. You know, it's all the things. It's like, how did that set her off so bad? But it did. And it may have taken several years to find her, but at least somebody recognized her from that America's Most Wanted airing. And Jason Horsley, thankfully, got the justice he rightfully deserved. But that is it for this case. True crime, Aruni, Dooney, Dingleberry, Dongs. I hope you found it interesting. As usual, if you are new here, hello, my name is Mike. I tell true crime stories here on YouTube. I also tell short form true crime stories over on TikTok. So please subscribe to the channel here. And if you want to follow my TikTok, it's in the link tree, which is in the description of this video below. You will also find my case list. It's public and you can scroll through it. It's pretty much alphabetical. If there is a case you want me to cover and you do not see it on that list, send me a quick email. My email is also listed below. And just send me the name of the case, like the victim or the killer, where it happened and when it happened. That way it's easier for me to find. And then I'll add that name to the list. I pick my cases at random. I can't promise you when I'll cover that case, but I will get to it at some point eventually. But that is it for this case, True Crime or Roonies. And so until the next case, Ta-ta for now. Yayo. Yeah, yeah.